I've always had a passion for being around and learning about animals. When I was younger, going to zoos and animal parks was always a part of my life. I wanted to share my passion with family and friends, so I started working with people that loved animals as much as I did, and my YouTube channel was born. Welcome back to my animal education series. Today I'm here with Allison at the Columbus Zoo. Hello. Hello. What do you have here behind us? So right back here we've got Rosie. She is our black rhino. She is 27 years old, which is pretty old for a rhino, especially rhinos in the wild. Um, what do you want to know about her? What is the difference between a uh, black rhino and a white rhino? As the people have seen my channel before, that white rhino was pretty big, and this one, the 27 years old, seems to be pretty small. Right, so there are a few differences. One is the size. So Rosie is kind of a smaller rhino compared to those white rhinos. Um, she's around 2,000 pounds. White rhinos can be around 3,000 pounds or so. Um, you can also, you can see her lip. It's pretty pointed. She's got that prehensile grasping lip um, compared to that white rhino. If you see, they have more of that wider, flatter mouth. Um, so it would help them eat a little bit more. She's more of a browser, so she can use that lip to pull leaves off of branches. And that really helps them out. Mm -hmm. So where would you find these rhinos in the wild? So these guys would be in southern and eastern Africa. Uh, they would live in grasslands or more savanna areas where they'd be eating grasses, scrubs, bushes, trees, just a lot of that browsing material of plants. And what kind of enrichment do you offer this rhino? She gets different things. She uh, really likes those watermelons, so she'll get whole, just whole watermelons that she can break open with her head and her horn to get at that watermelon. She gets ice blocks, so different treats. She really likes apples, so they might freeze some apples or lettuce or other fruits and veggies in an ice block, put that out there so she has to work for that food a little bit more just to keep her stimulated. So a lot of her enrichment can be food items. And as everyone knows, or at least most people know, these rhinos are constantly hunted for their horns. Mm -hmm. So why would hunters or poachers do this? Right, so these black rhinos, there's only about 5,000 or so left in the wild, and that is because of the poaching. So a lot of traditional Asian medicine for a long time has believed that rhino horns have medicinal properties to cure anything from headaches to cancer. Um, but unfortunately, that's not the case. Those horns are just made out of keratin, which is the same thing our fingernails or our hair is made out of. So. They want to remove those horns and that often results in those rhinos dying or they may just remove the horn and then kill the rhino. So we're losing quite a few rhinos in terrible even ways. every day um, out in the wild for those horns which really aren't doing anything but it also is a uh, symbol of status in Asian cultures so again that's another reason why they want to have those. Um, so there's been a lot of efforts trying to protect those rhinos. They have rangers protecting the areas. They try to put them in sanctuaries. They often, well, not often, but sometimes have been trying to cut the horns themselves in a safe way to keep that rhino living. So the poachers won't come in and take those rhino's horns and kill them. But unfortunately, the poachers still may kill uh, rhinos that don't have their horns, so that's not really quite a successful method. Um, they've been trying to also make artificial ones that can be sold on the black market so they're not actually getting that rhino horn, it's just an artificial horn that looks real. Um, they're trying to catch them yeah, at man. airports and things like that, really trying to get that to keep it from it being in the market. But it sucks that we even have to deal with that problem. Right. Because they're really cool animals. They are. They and they're are decreasing huge. very rapidly. And what is your favorite thing about this rhino? Um, so, one of the other enrichment items that I didn't mention is painting. So, Rosie is a really good painter. So, they have trained her, they'll put some paint on that prehensile upper lip, and they'll train her to lift her lip up and paint. And they just put different colors on, so she makes these abstract paintings, and we can sell those for conservation efforts that go towards helping those rhinos and other animals in the wild. So, that's really something fun to watch her do. She really enjoys doing that and she gets her treats, those apples, when she does that as well. And you're saying during the Cooper talk that uh, you uh, help with like, organizations and things that are helping rhinos. Right, so the Columbus Zoo supports a lot of different conservation projects and one of those is the International Rhino Foundation which is doing a lot of work to help those rhinos out in the wild and so part of the money that the Columbus Zoo gets goes to helping those efforts. And that's really good for these guys. It is. Well, thank you so much for telling us about these black rhinos. And if you guys enjoyed this week's episode, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and also check out my Instagram, at Paul Shirk. And as always, I'll see you next week.